let's jump into the story of you guys building the marketplace for Ape DAO and ApeCoin. And how did that happen? I remember when I saw the story break, and this is when I first heard about you. The headline was something like Small Startup Beats Out Magic Eden and Rarible to Build the Board Ape Yacht Club Marketplace. How did this go down? Tell us how you guys won that deal. First off, as I already referenced, I'm part of the Board Ape community, which is pretty relevant here and have been. They were one of the first NFTs I purchased when I was like, yes, I want to be in this space back a year and a half ago. And so always would have dreamed of working with that you know, mm -hmm. project organization, et cetera. And really one of our advisors, Tropo Farmer, who's mm -hmm. one of the better followed folks on Twitter, probably crypto Twitter period. Really, it was his idea that this would be an awesome way for us to put ourselves out there and an awesome way to show how quickly we can customize a experience to work well for this community. And because our product at the core is truly white label, there's not that much custom work. Hopefully that's not a dirty secret that has gone into this marketplace. Some of the metadata customization is fairly custom, but the, the mm -hmm. core platform itself is one, one hour setup or less. So we thought of it as really a, a proof of concept, but Magic even then, as we were drafting the proposal, kind of sniped us and, and beat us to the first post. And so went and kind of ripped what we had mm -hmm. and got it cleaned up over the course of three hours from there. I, I had it all drafted or I couldn't have moved that quickly. And, you know, entered the fray along with at least a couple of others who were trying to use the platform as a similar proof of concept. And the thing I would really remark on from there in terms of what led to the success in that process is one upstream of any of the tactical things we did, just deep engagement with the community. Already being a community member helps, but really like going into the Discord, there's a core Discord where a lot of the core eight point contributors hang out and really going engaging with them listening to feedback, incorporating that into the draft. And then the second thing is kind of looking deeply at and thinking critically about what does Magic Eden have to offer? And, and I have a lot of respect for Magic Eden as a Web3 startup, a ton of respect. They are really well run and better resourced than we were by a mile, right? <laughs> and so I had to kind of ask, you know, what can be unique about our platform versus others. And when I really looked at the Magic Eden tech stack, this is on the less positive side, I found it was very centralized. They didn't enable aggregation. They kind of double signing requirements to stop that. Also, all their listings are, are in a centralized database. That's true of Open yeah. and others as well. That's not unique, right? But anyways, really inhibited our tech stack because we were so early in our build mm -hmm. to move on to Reservoir, which is an open data layer, storing signatures on Arweave versus a centralized database, utilizing their aggregation APIs, which help enable distribution of liquidity and our operability, mm -hmm. and then really committed to the community that those were the values we wanted to play by, as well as non-extraction, where we then went to, I don't know, maybe like 25% of what Magic Eden was asking for in terms of a marketplace fee. I think they mm -hmm. were looking at 1% and we came back at a quarter percent, if I'm remembering correctly. And so really lo looking at, you know, less of the product itself, because Magic Eden has a great product, and more of how we build a business that deeply aligns with creators and their communities. And when we, you know, fast forward to, to the marketplace, worse things, when we think about the triangle of creators, traders, and collectors, for us, it's always been obvious we're here with the creators and the collectors. And so it's actually... <laughs> quite simplifying in terms of not needing to lead into the zero royalty thing as others have, et cetera, and kind of writing a focus there. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you won the bid partly because you were an ape holder yourself. So you're in the community. Was, was anybody from the Magic Eden side or the Rarible side or any of them ape holders? I actually think when a company gets that big, it's not even that relevant at that point. But were the CEOs, I don't know. It wasn't really part of the narrative, nor would it right. been that authentic at, at that point. Right, right. Okay, so you were part of the community, but you were also agile and able to respond to what the community wanted, whereas obviously Magic Eden was saying, this is what we do and this is how we do it. Here you go. So was the call from ApeCoin DAO, and it was ApeCoin DAO that put this out, right? Am I correct in saying so, that? Yeah, we put the proposal into the ApeCoin community along with Magic Eden, Rarible, X Marketplace, and some others. Who made the first move? Was it somebody so, on... So Magic Eden put in their proposal. Oh, on their own. They just said, on hey, you guys should have your own marketplace. And, and we had already planned to do the same thing. So I had a Google... No way. 
And I sent him the Google Doc that day because I was like, you know, if Magic Eden's going, it's go time, right? Holy um, genius. Wow. So just and, happened to be the same time. <laughs> yeah. And, and what was actually interesting in the process is it was a, each vote was a yes, no vote, right? And so because three of them initially went up to vote at the same time, this is a little bit semantic, but the DAO side of it is actually pretty interesting as well. Yeah. So three of them went through at the same time and they were all kind of to be unofficial marketplace of ApeCoin DAO. Right. And the, the implication there being that if multiple had one, then there could be multiple links from, from the ApeCoin website would kind of be the way to think about it. Yeah. And so not only did we win by a pretty wide margin, 85 plus percent, but none of our competitors won and none of our competitors have passed since in the several votes that, that have happened since that. I can't say that that's forever or that that's an explicit goal, but we're definitely trying to continue to deliver a high quality experience in a way that doesn't cause the community to think it's intelligent to just splinter kind of consumer demand and pushing folks in one direction.